Hello dear students, today we will discuss the topic soil pollution. The main objectives are to provide a basic understanding of soil pollution, to gain an insight into the causes and sources of soil pollution, to study the types of soil pollution and to study the impacts of soil pollution on environmental health to gain knowledge about the various control measures of soil pollution. Dear students, soil can be defined as the solid material on the earth's surface that results from the interaction of weathering and biological activity on the parent material or underlying hot rock. The soil is studied as naturally occurring phenomena is called pediology. From the Greek word pedion that is meaning soil or earth. Soil is one of the essential and valuable resources of nature. Life and living on the planet would be impossible without healthy soil. 95 percent of the human food is derived from earth making a plan for having healthy and productive soil is essential to human survival. Soil is the thin layer of organic and inorganic materials that covers the earth's rocky surface. The organic portion derived from plants and animals decayed remains are in concentrated in the dark uppermost top soil. The inorganic amount made up of rock fragments was formed over thousands of years by physical and chemical weathering of bedrock. Productive soils are necessary for agriculture to supply the world with sufficient food. Dear students, the soil is composed of two parts, biotic and abiotic materials. Soil is composed of biotic living and once living things like plants and insects and abiotic materials like non-living factors, minerals, water and air. The abiotic materials of the soil includes weathered rocks and minerals obtained from the decay of plants and animals called organic matter or humus and water and air. They are categorized in this part. But the biotic is the soil which enjoys small animals like insects and worms and plants, fungi, bacteria and other microbes that are grown in live soil. The soil is composed of 50 percent of organic and inorganic matters and 50 percent of air and water fills existing vacant spaces of the soil and keeps live organisms of the soil. The entrance of materials, biological organisms or energy into the soil will cause change in soil quality. This problem causes the earth to remove from its natural state. So, soil pollution refers to the contamination of soil with enormous concentration of toxic substances. It is a serious environmental concern since it harbors many health hazards. For example, exposure to soil containing high concentrations of benzene increases the risk of contracting leukemia. It is important to understand that all soils contain compounds that are harmful or toxic to human beings and other living organisms. However, the concentration of such substances in 
unpolluted soil is low enough that they do not pose any threat to the surrounding ecosystem. When the concentration of one of the more such toxic substances is high enough to cause damage to living organisms, the soil is said to be contaminated. A soil pollutant is any factor which deteriorates the quality, texture and mineral content of the soil or which disturbs the biological balance of the organisms in the ground. So, the pollution in soil harms plant growth. Dear students, the soil pollution is the introduction of substances, biological organisms or energy into the ground resulting in a change of the soil quality, which is likely to affect the regular use of the ground or endangering public health and the living environment. Hence, the addition of substances which adversely affected the quality of soil or its fertility is known as soil pollution. Or soil pollution is defined as the build up in soils of persistent toxic compounds, chemicals, salts, radioactive materials or disease causing agents, which have adverse effects on the plant growth and animal health. Generally, polluted water also pollutes the soil. Solid waste is a mixture of plastics, cloth, glass, metal and organic matter. Sewage, sewage sludge, building debris that are generated from households, commercial and industrial establishments and soil pollution. Fly ash, iron and steel slag, medical and industrial wastes disposed on land are essential soil pollution sources. Dear students, besides fertilizers and pesticides from agricultural use which reach soil as runoff and landfilling by municipal waste are growing cause of soil pollution. Acid rain and dry deposition of pollutants on the land surface also contribute to soil pollution. Let us do this, now we will discuss the causes of soil pollution. Soil pollution is caused due to the following reasons, deforestation and soil erosion. Soil erosion can be defined as surface litter movement and topsoil from one place to another. It is often caused by either the wind and flowing water accelerated by human activities such as farming, construction, or grazing by livestock, burning, grass cover and deforestation. Deforestation, agricultural development temperature extremes, precipitation, acid rain and human activities contribute to the erosion also. Humans speed up this process by construction, mining, cutting of timber, ore cropping and ore grazing. It results in floods and causes soil erosion. Did students forests and grasslands are excellent binding material that keeps the soil intact and healthy. They support many habitats and ecosystems which provide innumerable feeding pathways or food chains to all species. Their loss would threaten food chains and the survival of many species. Now, the industrial activity. Industrial activity has been the most significant contributor to soil pollution in the last century. 
significantly since the amount of mining and manufacturing has increased. Most industries are dependent on extracting materials from the earth. Whether it is iron ore or coal, the byproducts are contaminated and they are not disposed of in a manner that can be considered safe. As a result, the industrial waste lingers in the soil surface for a longer time and makes it unsuitable for use. Dumping of waste materials. Soil contaminates like industrial, hospital and nuclear wastes are left onto the surface through many different activities. Most of these are the result of accidents involving the vehicles that are transporting waste materials from the site at which it originated to the location at which it is to be deposited and accidents involving vehicles, automobiles, trucks and aeroplanes not transporting wastes, but carrying materials including fuel that when spilled contaminate the soil. Others involve nuclear accidents and human negligence also. Now, the municipal waste. It includes garbage, composed sludge from treatment plants and sewage from sanitary fields. Pollutant might be washed away by precipitation causing little or no harm to the ground on which it is found. However, pollutants will simply accumulate somewhere else. In the long run, these can get deposited to the soils of the surrounding area and pollute them by altering their chemical and biological properties. They also contaminate drinking water aquifer sources causing a vast number of diseases. Now, the excess use of fertilizers. Dear students, soil nutrients are essential for plant growth and development. Agriculture practices including agriculture chemicals are primary sources of pollution on or near the ground surface. Most agricultural chemicals are water soluble, nitrates and phosphates applied to fields, lawn and gardens to stimulate crops growth, grass and flowers. Farmers generally use fertilizers to correct soil deficiency. Fertilizers contaminate the soil with impurities which come from the raw materials used for their manufacture. Mixed fertilizers often contain ammonium nitrate, phosphorus as phosphorus pentoxide and potassium as potassium oxide. For instance, lead and cadmium present in traces in rock phosphate mineral get transferred to superphosphate fertilizer. Since the metals are not degradable, their accumulation in the soil above their toxic levels due to excessive use of phosphate fertilizers becomes an indestructible poison for crops. Now, the indiscriminate use of pesticides, insecticides and herbicides. The students since plants on which we depend for food are attacked by insects, fungi, bacteria, viruses, rodents and other animals and weeds which compete with the plants for nutrients. To kill unwanted populations living in or on their crops, farmers use pesticides on a large scale. The essential pesticides are DDT, BHC, chlorinated hydrocarbons, organophosphates, aldrin, malathion, dioldrin, furidone, etc. The remnants of such pesticides used on the pests may get absorbed by the soil particles, contaminating root crops grown in that soil. 
the consumption of such crops causes the pesticides remnants to enter human biological systems affecting them adversely. Pesticides not only bring toxic effect on human and animals, but also decrease the fertility of the soil. Now, the improper irrigation practices. The reduced or excess use of irrigation water or poorly drained soil flood water results in accumulation of dissolved salts on the soil surface, leading to high soil salinity or salination which refers to increase in the concentration of soluble salts. In dry areas, water evaporates quickly, leaving behind a white crust of salts in soil on the surface. The higher contamination of salts severely affects the plant's water absorption processes, resulting in adequate production. Also, irregular irrigation leads to a decrease in the moisture content of the land for soil medium and replenishment of solvents for nutrients and minerals. Now, acid rain. Dead students acid rain is caused when pollutants present in the air mix up with the rain and then fall back on the ground. The polluted water with dangerous acids like sulfuric acid and nitric acids could dissolve some of the essential nutrients and minerals found in the soil and change its structure and chemistry. Now, the accidental oil spills. Oil leaks can happen during storage and transport of chemicals. This can be seen at most of the fuel stations. The chemicals present in the fuel deteriorate the quality of soil and make them unsuitable for cultivation. These chemicals can enter into the groundwater through the soil and make the water undrinkable. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the sources of soil pollution. Several materials adversely affect the soil's physical chemical and biological properties and thus reduce its productivity. These are plastic bags. Plastic bags made from low density polyethylene are virtually indestructible, create a colossal environmental hazard. The discarded bags block drains and sewage systems, leftover food, vegetable waste, etc., on which cows and dogs feed may die due to plastic bags choking. Plastic is non-biodegradable and burning of plastic in garbage dumps release highly toxic and poisonous gases like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, phosgene, dioxin and other poisonous chlorinated compounds. Industrial sources, it includes fly ash, chemical residues, metallic and nuclear wastes. Many industrial chemicals, dyes, acids, etc., which find their way into the soil and are known to create many health hazards including cancer and kidney diseases. Agriculture sources. Agriculture chemicals, especially fertilizers and pesticides pollute the soil. Fertilizers in the run of water from these fields can cause eutrophication in water bodies. Pesticides are highly toxic chemicals that affect humans and other animals, causing respiratory problems, cancer and death. Urbanization. Urban activities generate large quantities of city wastes, including several biodegradable materials like vegetables, animal wastes, papers, wooden pieces, carcasses, plant twigs, leaves, cloth wastes, as well as sweepings, and many non biodegradable materials that is, plastic bags, plastic bottles 
plastic scraps, glass bottles, glass pieces, stool or cement pieces. On a rough estimate, Indian cities produce solid waste to the tune of more than 80,000 metric tons every day. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the types of soil pollution. Soil pollution is of following types like positive soil pollution. The reduction in the productivity of soil due to the addition of undesirable substances like pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, etc. is called positive decay. These pollutants have a cumulative effect and kill the soil organisms. Second, adverse soil pollution. The reduction in the soil fertility and productivity caused by the removal of useful components and minerals from soil by erosion, deforestation and improper methods of agriculture like excess tillage is called adverse pollution. Now, dear students, we will focus on the effects of soil pollution. First, effects on human health. The contamination of the soil has significant consequences on our health. Soil contaminants can exist in all three phases. Therefore, these contaminants can find their way into the human body via several channels such as direct contact with the skin or through the inhalation of contaminated soil dust. The short term effects of human exposure to polluted soil include headaches, nausea and vomiting, coughing, pain in the chest and wheezing, irritation of the skin and the eyes, also the fatigue and weakness. A variety of long term ailments have been linked to soil pollution. Some such diseases are exposure to high levels of lead can result in permanent damage to the nervous system. Children are particularly vulnerable to lead. Depression of CNS central nervous system, damage to vital organs such as the kidney and the liver, high risk of developing cancer. It can be noted that many soil pollutants such as petroleum hydrocarbons and industrial solvents have been linked to congenital disorders in humans. Thus, soil pollution can have several negative effects on human health. Now, the effects on plant growth. The ecological balance of any system gets affected due to the wide separate contamination of the soil. Most plants cannot adapt when the chemistry of the soil changes so radically in a short period. For example, fungi and bacteria found in the ground that binds it together begin to decline, which creates an additional soil erosion problem. The fertility slowly diminishes making land unsuitable for agriculture and any local vegetation to survive. Now, the decreased soil fertility, the toxic chemicals present in the soil can decrease soil fertility and decrease soil yield. The contaminated soil is then used to produce fruits and vegetables, which lacks quality nutrients and may contain some poisonous substances to cause serious health problems in people consuming them. Now, the toxic dust. The emission of toxic and foul gases from landfills pollutes the environment and causes severe effects on some people's health. The unpleasant smell causes inconvenience to other people. Now, the change in soil structure. The death of many soil organisms like earthworms in the soil can alter the soil structure. Apart from that, it could also force other predators to move to
to other places in search of food. Food shortage Soil pollution leads to reduced food production, leading to food shortage due to the loss of fertility and essential nutrients. With population growth, it becomes more critical. Now, the desertification. Continuous exposure of eroded soil to the sun for more extended periods may transform the land into sandy and rocky in nature. These are symptoms of desertification, rendering the soil unsuitable for cultivation and hence decrease agricultural land. Now, the water pollution. Dead students topsoil which is washed away also contributes to water pollution by clogging of lakes, streams and increasing turbidity of the water, ultimately leading to the loss of aquatic life. Water logging. Excess use of irrigation leads to water logging and water logging due to surface flooding or a high water table. Excess to irrigation practices may cause water logging due to rise in water table of the area. The productivity of water logger soil is severely affected due to the lesser availability of plants. Now, the salination. Salination refers to an increase in the concentration of soluble salts in the soil. Poor irrigation practices and excessive irrigation resulting in accumulation of dissolved salts on the soil surface. The higher concentration of salts severely affects the plant's water absorption processes resulting in adequate production. Now, the eutrophication. Eutrophication of waterways occurs due to the runoff of fertilizers of phosphates and nitrates and domestic sewage from soil to water bodies which disrupt the whole aquatic life. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the control measures of soil pollution. The following measures should be employed to control the soil pollution. First, reducing the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Applying biofertilizers and manures can reduce chemical fertilizer and pesticide use. Biological methods of pest control can also reduce the use of pesticides and thereby minimize soil pollution. Second, reusing of materials, materials such as glass containers, plastic bags, paper, cloth, etc. can be reused at domestic levels rather than being disposed of reducing solid waste pollution recycling and recovery of materials. This is a reasonable solution for reducing soil pollution. Materials such as paper, some kinds of plastics and glass can and are being recycled. This decreases the volume of refuse and helps in the conservation of natural resources. For example, recovery of a one ton of a paper can save 17 trees. Now, the reforestation. The control of land loss and soil erosion can be attempted through restoring the forest shelter belts or wind breakers and grass cover to check wastelands, soil erosion and floods. Crop rotation or mixed cropping can improve the fertility of the land. Now, solid waste treatment. Proper methods should be adopted for the management of solid waste disposal. Industrial wastes can be treated physically, chemically and biologically until they are less hazards. Acid and alkaline waste should be first neutralized. The insoluble material, if biodegradable, should be allowed to degrade under controlled condition before being disposed of. Treatment of industrial wastes. The industrial wastes before disposal should be treated adequately for removing hazardous materials. New areas 
for hazardous waste storage should be investigated such as deep well injection and more secure land fills. Bearing the waste in locations situated away from the residential areas is the most straightforward and most widely used reliable waste management technique. Environmental and aesthetic considerations must be taken into account before selecting the dumping sites. Biomedical waste should be separately collected and incinerated in proper incinerators. But incineration of other wastes is expensive and leaves a considerable residue and adds to air pollution. The student's pyrolysis is a combustion process in the absence of oxygen or the material burnt under controlled atmosphere of oxygen. It is an alternate to incineration. The gas and liquid thus obtained can be used as fuels. Pyrolysis of carbonaceous wastes like firewood, coconut palm waste, corn combs, cashew shell, rice husk, paddy straw, and sawdust yields charcoal and tar products, methyl alcohol, acetic acid acetone and fuel gas. Generation of biogas. Did students biodegradable organic wastes, cattle dung and night soils should be used in the biogas plants to generate inflammable methane gas. Now the maintaining soil fertility. To maintain the soil fertility it is essential to keep the soil food web where all soil organisms like bacteria, fungi, actinomycetes, protozoa, earthworms, etc. and they flourish in population in presence of sufficient amount of soil organic matter. For that purpose following farming practices are recommended. Like increased use of organic manures green manures. Second, enriched vermicompost and biocomposts. Use of biofertilizers, crop rotation with high and low biomass crops, avoiding the use of chemical fertilizers, strict laws, various environmental regulations formulated from time to time related to pollution, management of solid wastes and hazardous waste, industrial setup and permissible limits of various chemicals in the environment should be followed strictly and kept under check. Now dear students, we will be talking about mass awareness. Mass awareness is most important as if every individual contributes substantially the effect will be visible not only at the community, city, state or national level but also at the global level as the environment has no boundaries. Now dear students we will be talking about the methods of soil treatment. Some of the techniques for cleaning polluted soil are as under like bioremediation. It can be defined as any process that uses microbes, fungi, green plants or enzymes to return the natural environment altered by contaminants to its original condition. Bioremediation may be employed to attack specific soil contaminants such as degradation of chlorinated hydrocarbons by bacteria generally requires a mechanism for stimulating and maintaining the activity of the microorganisms. Example, the addition of an electron acceptor like oxygen and nitrate or nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus and an energy source like carbon. An example of a more general approach is the clean up of oil cipollas by adding nitrate and sulphate fertilizers to facilitate the decomposition of crude oil by indigenous or exogenous bacteria. 
did students naturally occurring by remediation and phyto remediation have been used for centuries. For example, desalination of agriculture land by phyto extraction has a long tradition. Bioremediation technologies can be generally classified as either in situ or ex situ. In situ bioremediation involves treating the contaminated material at the site. Ex situ consists of the removal of contaminated material to be treated elsewhere. Conditions that favor bioremediation include the following temperature favorable for organisms availability of a water, availability of a nutrients like NPK, carbon nitrogen ratio of the contaminant material, availability of oxygen in sufficient quantity in the soil. Some examples of the bioremediation technologies are bioventing that is injection of air or nutrients into the unsaturated zone land forming, bioreactor compositing, bio augmentation that is inoculation of a soil with microbes, rhizofiltration and biostimulation that is stimulation of biological activity and sparging or that means injection of air or nutrients into the unsaturated and saturated zone. Phytoremediation. The students since all contaminants are not easily treated by bioremediation using microorganisms. For example, heavy metals such as cadmium and lead are not readily absorbed or captured by organisms. The assimilation of metals such as mercury into the food chain may worsen matters. So, phytoremediation is useful in these circumstances because natural plants or transgenic plants can by accumulate these toxins in their above ground parts which are then harvested for removal. The heavy metals in the harvested biomass may be further concentrated by incineration or even recycled for industrial use. Air sparging, it is an in situ remedial technology that reduces volatile constituents concentrations in petroleum products that are absorbed to the soils and dissolved in groundwater. This technology also known as in situ air stripping and in situ volatilization involves injecting contaminated free air into the subsurface saturated zone that enabling a phase transfer of hydrocarbons from a dissolved state to a vapor phase. The atmosphere is then vented through the unsaturated zone. Air sparging is most often used together with soil vapor extraction, but it can also be used with other remedial technologies. Now, the soil washing. Soil washing is a water based process for scrubbing soils ex situ to remove contaminants. This process removes impurities from grounds either by dissolving or suspending them in the wash solutions, which can be sustained by chemical manipulation of pH for some time or by concentrating them into a smaller volume of soil through particle size separation, gravity separation and attrition scrubbing that is similar to those techniques used in a sand and gravel operations. The concept of reducing soil contamination through particle size separation is based on the finding that most organic and inorganic contaminants tend to bind either chemically or physically to clay silt and organic soil particles. The mud and clay in turn are attached to sand and gravel particles by physical processes, primarily compaction and adhesion. Washing processes that separate the fine clay and silt particles from the coarser sand and gravel soil particles effectively separate and concentrate the contaminants into a smaller soil volume that can be further treated or disposed of. Dear students, gravity separation is useful for removing high or low specific gravity particles such as heavy metal containing compounds. 
attrition scrubbing removes adherent contaminant films from coarser particles. However, attrition washing can increase the fines in the soils processed. The clean larger fraction can be returned to the site for continued use. Soil washing is generally considered a media transfer technology. The contaminated water generated from soil washing is treated with the technology or the technologies that are suitable for the contaminators. The duration of the soil washing is typically short to medium term. Now the biopiles. Biopile treatment is a technology in which excavated soils are mixed with soil amendments and place it on a treatment area that includes leakage collection systems and some forms of aeration. It is used to reduce concentrations of petroleum constituents in excavated soils through the use of biodegradation. Moisture, heat, nutrients, oxygen and pH can be controlled to enhance biodegradation. The treatment area will generally be covered or contained within impermeable liner to minimize contaminants risk leaching into uncontaminated soil. The drainage itself may be treated in a bioreactor before recycling. Vendors have developed proprietary nutrient and additive formulations and methods for incorporating the formulation into soil to stimulate biodegradation. The formulation are usually modified for site specific conditions. The soil piles can be three to the soil piles can be 2 to 3 meters high. Soil piles may be covered with plastic to control runoff, evaporation and volatilization and promote solar heating. If volatile organic compounds in the soil will volatilize into the air stream, the air leaving can be treated to remove or destroy the volatile organic compounds before they are discharged to atmosphere. Dear students, Soil pollution is a serious environmental concern since it harbors many health hazards. Soil acts as a natural sink for contaminants by accumulating and sometimes concentrating contaminants that end up in soil from various sources. Tiny amounts of contaminants accumulate in soil and depending on the environmental conditions including soil types and the degradability of the released contaminant can reach high level planting always and pollute the soil. With this we conclude today's lecture hope you have understood well thank you.